Welcome to another video. Let's do some multivariable calculus. We're going to look for the domain and the range of a function with multiple variables. So this is what you call multivariable calculus. It's in calculus 3 if you're still in school and this has three variables, three independent variables. So this is in the fourth dimension. This has two independent variables, x and y, so this is in the third dimension. So this is actually represents a 3D shape, and this represents a 4D shape. So unfortunately, I cannot sketch a 4D shape because I do not live in the fourth dimension. I still live in 3D. So if you know how to sketch this, let me know what you get. However, I know that I can find the domain and I can find the range. I was able to use um, a program to sketch this one. So, how do you find the domain and the range? It is not different from what you would do if you had only one variable. You just have to think of what cannot be and what can be. So, let's think about what cannot be and what can be, and we'll figure out the domain and the range. Let's get into it. So, let's consider the first function, this one. We don't know what this is. We can choose any variable, but we're just saying it's a function of that. So it could be W, it could be Q, it could be P, it doesn't matter. This is our focus. Now look under the square root sign. What cannot be? Remember that if you take the square root of anything, that thing cannot be negative. The smallest we can get is zero. And that's how you find the domain even when we worked with a single variable function, which we're used to. So now that we have three variables, all we can say is that um, we know that 9 minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared cannot be less than zero. They can't be zero. Well, we can get zero under a square root sign. You just cannot have a negative, so it cannot be less than zero. Okay, so all we can say is this, what we have here is greater than or equal to zero. I think that's a better option to say, so we can find our domain. So whatever is under the square root sign is greater than zero, or at least it is equal to zero. And, but we know that we can isolate this. Look, this is going to be 9 minus, this is um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. You see? But what is this? This is the equation of a sphere. Well, if you put something on the other side, this represents a sphere. Okay? So, it's a 3D shape, it's a ball, an actual ball, not just a flat circle. This is an actual ball. So, that means if we move this to one side and that to the other side, we can move this here and leave this here. So, we end up with x squared plus y squared plus z squared will be less than or equal to 9. Or let's write it as 3 squared. So, this is what must be for this to be, to be true. Therefore, we say that the domain of this multivariable function is a sphere of a radius of at most three, because this is the radius of the sphere. So, you can have a ball that is not bigger than three in terms of its radius, and that's it. It's a sphere of radius of less than or equal to three. So, we can describe it as a sphere a sphere of radius less than or equal to 3. Okay, so that's what we've got. So we write this as our domain. This is not necessary unless you are asked to sketch the domain. If you sketch the domain, then you have to do something like this. You have to do something like this. Um, you make a sketch. It should be a 3D shape. This is your X. This is your z, and this is your y, and you sketch a sphere of radius 3. Mark this as 3, 3, or it doesn't matter. Just sketch a sphere and do something like this also just to show 
that what you have is a sphere and the radius is three. And that is the domain of this 4D. You can see I can't go into 4D, but I can draw this one. Well, that's what your domain looks like. Now, um, what's the range? So let's write here, the domain is x squared. Oh, sorry. The domain is equal to the set of x, y, z, such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to, I'm just gonna use nine here. And that's how you write the domain of a multivariable function because it's a set of, set of points. These are 3D points, x, y, z has to be there. Okay, and what will be the range? So let's think again. What is the smallest thing that can come out of this? The smallest thing that can come out of a square root function is zero. You can't get a negative out of it. Okay, so the smallest that can come out of this is a zero. So our range is gonna be from zero to, what would be the biggest thing that can come out of this? Well, it doesn't matter what you do. It's either it is zero or it is three, right? Because let's say this becomes zero. If everything here becomes zero, 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 they cannot be negative, okay? Because, you're sub because you've squared them. So it's gonna be zero, zero, zero. You're gonna end up with just nine. Nine minus zero is nine. What's the square root of nine? Is it plus or minus three? We've, we've argued this, okay? So I don't wanna go back to it. The square root of nine is three. So that is your range. And we're done. Okay, so this is one of those cases where you cannot do the argument that the square root of a number is plus or minus three. Just know it's the principal roots. Okay, so I'm gonna keep using that word. Now let's go to the next one. So for the second one, we can relate to it better because it's in 3D, we have just two variables. We have the X and the Y and we're building on it. So it's like you're building on a 2D, so you're gonna be generating a 3D. This one we're building on a 3D, I don't know what a 4D looks like. So here, you have, it's the same strategy, what can we not have? So look at the denominator, what will cause a problem? Well, we know that X plus Y is not equal to zero. We know that. Because if this is zero, then we have an undefined situation. So, um, so that means we know that y is not equal to negative x, right? So basically, what we're saying is any point where y is equal to negative x will be a problem. No other point is going to be a problem. So the domain of this function is every point you can see on the Euclidean plane. So every point you can see here is good, except the point where y is equal to negative x. And this is a line, okay? So we know that, so we avoid the line where y equals negative x. And what does that line look like? Well, this is the identity line with the negative slope, right? It is the line that goes this way. So it's gonna, everywhere on the plane is okay, but we do not want this line. Y equals negative X. So the domain is the entire R2, that is the entire XY plane, except for this line. So this is the line we don't want. So how do you represent that? You say that the domain is equal to the set of x, y, um, such that x is not equal to, or let's say y is not, always write y in terms of x. y is not equal to negative x. I think that's, that's the best way to put it. And if you have to sketch it, you have to say this line is not real. I mean, it's not included, so we put dotted lines there and every other part is real. So you can do legit lines. You know, every other line is good, but this one is not good. Okay, 
and I actually sketched it so you can see what it looks like. Let's talk about the range. What is the minimum you can get from this? You know, this doesn't look like it has any minimum. Okay, you, you can, it goes on forever and it has no maximum. It goes on forever. So all the values you can get just go everywhere forever. And this is what the shape looks like. So let's write the range. The range of this is the set of all, let's pick, let's say Z, okay, such that um, it's from Z, negative infinity is less than Z, and Z is less than infinity. So it's from infinity to infinity. I would like to write it this way. Actually, this range too, I would like to write it this way. You can write it this way, that it is the set of, let's pick a function. This is a, so let's say it is a set of, um, the set of W such that um, zero is less than or equal to W and W is less than or equal to three. This is another way you could write this range, just a similar way I wrote this one. Okay, never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.